Hi there guys, here speaking is Cesar Denis from Sovd, a small tech company in Brazil. Well, we've recently decided to translate all of our Google Earth Engine related videos into English and we are going to start now with the Google Earth Engine area calculation, which in my opinion is one of the most important things to do inside of Google Earth Engine. So the first thing is that Earth is not flat. If you truly think that Earth is flat, then you should stop watching this video right now and go do something else. But in the other case, where you do believe Earth is spherical or nearly spherical, then you should know that spherical surfaces cannot be represented as a plan without some kind of distortion associated to its final representation. That's the main reason why we've created cartographic projections. And the impossibility of representing three-dimensional spherical or nearly spherical surfaces as a flat plan was mathematically proven by this fellow here in the right side of the screen, Carl Friedrich Gauss. Gauss was a brilliant mathematician that contributed quite a lot, not only with mathematics, but a lot with optics as well. Well, when it comes to Google Earth Engine and area calculation, the concept of cartographic projection has to be memorized by GEE users. Well, a map projection is basically a mathematical formulation that was designed to minimize possible distortions of a map. First important thing, by saying minimize, I'm not saying exclude. Two, when I say possible distortions, it can be related to several spatial properties, such as area, angle, distance, or shape. Warning, and it's in this black and yellow huge box, by purpose. In Google Earth Engine, the strategy for calculating areas in a cartographically appropriate manner is through the use of EE image pixel area. Please memorize it. Let's understand how this function is structured. Well, every time you call this function, a new matrix is going to be built. This new matrix was constructed based on the Lambert azimuthal equal area. Therefore, a equal area projection, and it is centered on small blocks of pixel. What it means? When we are processing blocks of pixels in Google Earth Engine, the center of the projection used in the image pixel area function will be the block of pixel itself. If we are working with a really huge area, too large, then the area will be subdivided into individual pieces, but each piece will have its own Lambert azimuthal equal area. Then, the four vertices of each pixel from your original data will be projected into the Lambert azimuthal equal area. And, as the final part of the image pixel area function, the values in meters square of each pixel will be calculated and stored in this new resultant matrix. Let's try to understand all of that in a more practical way. Let's pretend we are working with this area here. And here we have a bunch of vegetation, not vegetation, and a river, just a fill of water. So let's pretend we've classified this into this. In green, we have vegetation. In magenta, we have not vegetation. And in blue, we have water. Let's pretend once again that we are interested in calculating the area of the magenta class, the not vegetation class. 
The second step we have to do is that we need to binarize the data we are going to work. Therefore, the not vegetation, which is our interest area, it is going to inherit the pixel value of 1, while everything else will be considered 0, so it's a binary data, 1 for the thing we want to work with, we are interested in, and 0 for everything else. Then we are going to call the EE image pixel area. Remember what we've demonstrated earlier. It will subdivide, if necessary, your data into small blocks of pixels. Each block of pixel will be the center of a new projection. If we analyze it within more detail, we're going to see that each pixel of this new matrix stores inside of it the value in meters square of that given position of Earth. And because this new matrix is based on an equal area projection, it is more appropriate for area calculation. It is considering eventual projection distortion. Basically, what we have is this. We have one matrix that stores the meter square values of each pixel. We have the binary data. And we are going to multiply this one by the other. If we grab the first matrix on the top, which is the EE image pixel area matrix, it has all the values in meter square. And then we multiply by the binary data. Black represents zero and white represents one. What we are doing is basically meter square times one, which means meter square. Meter square times zero, which means zero. Therefore, the result of this multiplication is something like this. All the black pixels are zeroed, while all the white pixels have the meter square values, which are different from one another because the projection distortions are being considered. What we have to do once we have this is basically to sum everything up. This time we're going to use the reducer.sum and it will add up the area that belonged in the past to the pixels that represented the number one or the non-vegetation class. Basically, that's all. What we've learned in summary is that giving any image collection and prepared a classification, once you binarize your interest class, you can multiply that result versus the image pixel area. And at the end, you sum the result of the multiplication, and that's all. Let's see the code we've written to demonstrate that. So basically, here's the code. What we have here is a image collection. In this case, we are working with the, the Landsat 8 real-time TOA data. Then we have a classification. We are using a simple slicing technique to slice out all the pixel values from the band 4 that are greater or equal 0.3. Once we have that, we create a mask with it. This will be our binary value number one. Here, the first block of code is basically the block that calculates appropriately the area by using the EE image pixel area. So we've created a new variable. We are using the classification we've created first multiplying it by pixel area, and we are summing the area of the pixels that were multiplied up here, and we are doing this for the pixels that, that falls within the geometry 2. And basically, the result of that, we are storing in the same variable again, and we are dividing by 1 times e to the power of 6 which is the same thing of saying divide by 1 million. This will bring us kilometers squared. And then we have this other block here of code, which is basically what we intuitively do if we know the size of the Landsat pixel 
and we know the quantity of pixels that represents a specific class, we can simply multiply its area by the quantity of pixels. That's exactly what we are doing here. So we are first counting the quantity of pixels and then we are multiplying by 900 meters square. This gives us the area in kilometers squared once we divide by a million. This is naturally what we do, but this is wrong. Don't do that. Remember, Earth is not flat. If you count pixels and then multiply by 900, you are assuming the surface of the Earth is flat, and it isn't. Because it isn't flat, we have created cartographic projections. And that is embedded within the EE image pixel area. So to demonstrate the difference between both of the approaches, we are calculating the difference, subtracting each one of the variables. The difference is huge. We have a difference higher than 1,100 kilometers squared. And this has nothing to do with changes in the process of classification. It's basically a difference in calculation. One considers the effects of projection, and the other is not considering at all any cartographic concept. I hope this video helps you out, and I ask you guys to, to sign up to our channel and follow our videos. From this point on, every video we update related to Google Earth Engine or statistics will be available in English, Portuguese, and Spanish. That's all by now. Thank you. See you somehow, somewhere.